Okay, what if we want to test the equality of population proportions, but now we have three or more? Okay, so in the past we've used the z-test um, to do to test population proportions, but now what if we have three or more proportions? This, as you're going to see, is going to use a chi-square test. And if you're wondering, yes, there is a cat here, Mickey. She won't move, so we'll hope for the best. All right, so this scenario says we pretty much want to study, is there a difference in the proportion of customer loyalty to a particular automobile? So we go out and we sample uh, individuals that bought the Chevy Impala, the Ford Fusion, and the Honda Accord. So our hypothesis is going, our null hypothesis is going to be there is no difference between customer loyalty for these three population proportions. Where then the alternative would say they're not all equal, and then you could do further tests to figure out which one is not equal. All right, so we go out and we get some data, and that's what this table is right here. So in other words, the Chevy Impala 69 said that they would, out of 125 asked, um, 120 out of 200, 123 out of 175. So these all would say they would repurchase that model. Then all I've done here is just sum the rows, sum the columns, and then of course summed my entire group. So my sample size is 500. Okay, that's my total sample size. So you could look at just in general and say, well, 312 out of 500 would be that anybody, you know, looking at all the proportions together, would repurchase. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare what we would expect, okay, what we would expect to get, so we need to find that, with what we actually observed. And so this is the formula, and you can do some little tricks, if you're good with pivot tables, might be a little faster, but some little tricks in here. So this is the formula, so I know I want to do an equal, open a parentheses, this first row total. Now I'm going to copy this for this row, so I don't want, oops, where did I click? I don't want that to change, so I'm making an absolute reference. Okay, if you remember, you can just press F4. I think it's weird and different on the Mac, like a function F4 or something. But I want to always reference that row times, looking at my formula, the column total. Now, I want this to move as I copy it over and then divided by the grand total, the total sample size. Well, of course, I'm always going to divide by that same sample size. All right, so I hit enter. And now what I can do is just click and drag this straight across. And I can double click to see that it actually did keep the same row totals and then it moved for each column. All right, and do the same thing here. So I want to take this row total now, and I want to always stay on that row, times my column I want to change, and then divide it by my total sample, which I don't want to change. So remember, that's what those little dollar absolute reference says, don't change that cell. So I do the same thing here. I copy it straight across. And again, double click in. I can see that it moved my columns, but it kept my same row. And then I can sum, so total my rows. And do that here. I can total my columns. Do that here. And then go straight across just for complete completeness with all the totals. So, and of course, uh, my expected should equal my sa my sample sizes should be equal. All right. So now to find the chi-square test statistic, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my observed, okay, the frequencies observed, minus my expected, square that, and then divide it by the expected. So let's think about this. And then I'm going to add all, all of this entire table up. So I'm going to take what I observed minus my expected that I calculated. I'm going to square it, and then I'm going to divide by the expected. Now, 
when I move and I copy these, I want all of them to move, right? When I move one over, I want it to move over to the forward, um, observe the expected. And so there's nothing that's going to be absolute referenced here. So on this one, I can actually grab this oops, and copy that. And then I can do the same thing and copy it straight down. And then from here, all I need is a total of all these values in this table. So I total that, and that would be my test statistic. Okay, so just kind of a little tricky to get these. It's just making it faster when I don't have to sit here and manually do each one of these formulas. So my chi-square test statistic is 7.89. Well, from here, what I could do is I could go to a table and I could see, what did I get here? I got 7.89. So let's just kind of write this over here. And I know that there's two degrees of freedom. How do I know there's two degrees of freedom? Because there's one, two, three categories. So three minus one, my two degrees of freedom. And so I'm on this row and I can kind of just look to see where this would fall. And it looks like that it would fall somewhere between 0 0.02 and 0 0.01. So we would know our p-value, okay, in this case, is certainly going to be pretty small and looks like we're going to reject, you know, based on whatever you decided to compare. Or you can get an exact p-value with this chi-square distribution right, because remember you're reading this probability to the right. Notice it asks you for your x, which is your test statistic, and then my degrees of freedom, which would be two, and I could get more of an exact value that I do see is between these, but certainly that's a very small p-value, which in this case would warrant rejection. So that's testing three or more proportions and you're looking for equality between those proportions.